Good morning, and today is another great recipe, easy crock pot, pot roast. Um, as you can see, the morning is a little hectic. I've got my Roomba going. I've got breakfast going for my son over there. He ate a little bit and ran off. So I will be doing a voiceover over this um, when I do my final edit because uh, everything's just noisy, but I just wanted to point out kind of this is what's happening on a weekend in my life. This is Saturday morning. I'm drinking my coffee, but getting the pot roast going now so that it can cook for six hours. Um, it's 8 a.m., so in six hours, it'll be already warm, can be either a late lunch or be waiting for us for dinner. Okay, now switching to voiceover just to minimize the noise. And I'm going to walk you through the ingredients. First thing you'll need is about... Uh, two to three pounds of any kind of cut of beef. You could also do this with pork, uh, but for traditional pot roast, it's usually beef. I've got it cut in pretty large chunks. I didn't keep it whole. This helps it cook a little slightly quicker, um, but it's up to you. You could leave it whole. You could cut it in smaller pieces, but you do want it in pretty big chunks because this is going to cook for six hours. I have about uh, six potatoes there, some red, some yellow, and three carrots. You want the ratio to be almost exact so the same amount and weight of potatoes to carrot this one large onion may not use all of it um also cut in big chunks this savory pot roast uh seasoning mix is the crock pot brand but you know depending on your grocery store you'll find so many different variations on this you could also use just a regular au jus gravy a regular brown sauce gravy and if you didn't have any of that you could also just do a uh, cornstarch slurry I'm going to add a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Also going to add some red wine, which I'll show you later. <clears throat> and you could also um, add flour as well to thicken your stew. Um, diced um, canned tomatoes. But to that, I'm adding two more optional uh, ingredients. I'm adding fresh tomatoes as well in big chunks and fresh bell peppers. Traditionally, they don't go in, but I like those flavors, so I'm adding them. And I'm going to chop up this much parsley. Um, chop finely. You can add it at the very end or at the beginning. It doesn't really matter. It's just your own preference if you want the parsley to be fresh or not. This is about six to eight garlic cloves mashed up. I had it frozen, and um, it's defrosting on my counter. The first thing I'm going to do is dry off the beef. We want it to sear it, so you want it to be as dry as possible. That's why I've got it on paper towels. And um, then I'm going to sear it on several sides to get it nice and browned. Here I've got my cast iron uh, with an enamel coating heating up on medium high heat. Um, I'm going to use coconut oil. So you just want a, an oil that can handle high temperatures. Um, a little bit of info on cast iron pans. If you take good care of them, you season them and rub them the, with some oil at the end of each use, do not use soap on them, they can last you a lifetime. They're really great, versatile, and what I love about them is that once they're hot, every part of that pan will be same temperature. This ensures, ensures more even cooking. You can also use, like as I'm showing you, metal tipped uh, utensils on it. It will not scratch it or ruin your pan as opposed to Teflon pans. I'm putting in about three three large pieces and i'm going to leave them until they release on their own so don't move flip them back and forth just let them um, sizzle until you have a nice cross forming as you see here i turn them over and as i'm turning the sides i'm adding salt and pepper to both a lot of pepper again some of it will <laughs> stay in the skillet um, so you want to kind of go heavy on the salt and pepper at this point i am going to cook this in the crock pot uh, again, one reason I like the crock pot and using the liners, it's easy cleanup. It will turn off by itself so you don't have to stand over and watch it. And it will automatically, after it's done cooking at six hours, turn to keep warm setting. So I like that. You don't have to be even inside the house for this machine to stop cooking. So uh, much more convenient. I'm going to add, as I'm showing you here, some red wine. You want to use wine that you would drink. Um inside a recipe like this it does make a difference so i would say don't use cooking wine use good wine that you would normally drink uh, a dark red uh goes well with like a pot roast like this or a beef stew so i'm going to put this in layers i'm not going to mix it um i'm going to start with the beef at the very bottom and i will not stir this until we're at the two hour mark um, then after that i'm going to add in my canned tomatoes and 
I'm also going to add in some garlic. I'm going to shake some of the seasoning packet on top and there's my garlic. Then I'm going to top this off with vegetables. Like I said, the seasoning mix will go at the very top. Uh, I'm also adding a couple more ingredients. I'm adding dry dill because I didn't have any fresh dill. I'm also adding some bay leaves and there go the potatoes. And again, add salt and pepper to these layers as well. Um, either as you go or you can wait till the end, but I, I would suggest putting them in now before the cooking starts. I'm adding Worcestershire sauce, just a few splashes. I'm not measuring anything here. I've, I've made this recipe so many times that I just kind of, um, I, some of these measurements just because I know how much of each one I like, um, when I'm, um, eating it. So, but if you want specific measurements, you can look up a traditional pot roast recipe. I put in about a cup and a half of red wine and then here come in my dry spices. I'm turning on my crock pot. Setting is low for six hours. I'm going to leave it with a lid on for two solid hours before opening it up. So after two hours, I realized I actually want to finish this off in the oven. One reason is the potatoes were just looking kind of translucent and I kind of wanted them to have a little bit more color and look more like a roasted vegetable. So I decided to switch gears, put it in a casserole dish like this at this point after two hours in the crock pot and continue cooking it uh, the same way you would start uh, just with fresh ingredients. I'm going to put it in a 325 degree oven for 30 minutes covered and then reduce my temperature to 300 degrees and cook it for an hour and a half also covered and stirring in between. Okay, so after a total two hours in the oven, this is what it looks like. I kept it covered the whole time, peeking in, mixing um, halfway through. The meat is really soft. I mean, me just pushing it on it lightly, making it break up. And as you can see, there's so much gravy from all the liquid that we added. And you don't really need much. This is enough for gravy right there. And then we had leftover um, gravy at the bottom when I had it in the crock pot. So I saved that too also on the side. Just as extra gravy for anyone who wants it with extra sauce. So this is great, easy, simple dinner. As you can see, the vegetables got brown, the carrots too, and that's kind of the texture I was looking for, more than just boiled. So I'm really happy with this recipe. So easy to make, feeds a crowd. You can double or triple this recipe, depending on how many people you're feeding or scale it down. But it's delicious, it's aromatic, it makes the whole house smell uh, wonderful. The red wine uh, flavor and scent really comes through as well. And uh, I hope you try this recipe. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.